Welcome to the study of this topic, Sources of Nigerian Law. Now, before we attempt a lecture on these sources of Nigerian law, we need to understand the concept law. What is law? Now, law, as a rule, has no one single accepted definition. But for the purpose of this study, we will attempt a definition as thus that this law is a body of rules set down to regulate the conduct of people or people living in a particular society. Now, having had that at the background, now we look at the sources of Nigerian law. Now, the sources of Nigerian law are listed as follows. We have one, legislation. We have two, the received English law, also known as the principle of common law, the doctrine of equity, and the statute of general application. Then, B, we have customary law. E, we have judicial precedents, also known as judicial decisions or case law. Now, let's pick at it, pick at them one by one. What are legislation? Now, legislation in Nigeria today are the laws made by the National Assembly, which comprises of the House of Representatives and the Senate. The Senate being the upper chamber and the House of Representatives being the lower house. Now, these bodies together make pronouncements in form of laws which serves as a legislative instrument to govern Nigeria. And then at the state also we have the state laws which are made by the state house of assembly. And then the third one being the third arm of lawmaking which is the bylaws made by the local government. Now secondly we look at the received English law which comprises of the principles of common law. We have the doctrine of equity and at the same time we have statute of general application. Now what do we understand by the common law principles? Now by the principle of common law these are laws that were in existence in England which were customs of the people that were brought together and all the ambiguity amongst them were eliminated and then a particular laws were established from those common customs and these customs are known as common laws they are the first types of law that was used in England which by virtue of colonization of Nigeria they became a received English law in Nigeria and were used to administer Nigeria by the colonial master. Now while the common law was in operation it was observed that common law was very rigid it was highly technical and the only compensation known to common law at that time was just nothing but damages and as a result of these inadequacies and because it was wielding injustice on the people the people had to cry to the conscience of the king that the king should come to their aid for example a situation where a person was supposed to come for common law justice and he was unable to come and was late for about two minutes that case is struck off and justice could not be attained at that moment and because of all this ambiguity the people cried to the king's conscience and the king decided to form another body known as the chancery division and the recommendation of the chancery division gave rise to what is known as the doctrine of equity now in other words equity came in to mitigate the hardship created by the common law principles and then equity as is a rule does not operate in vacuum and because it's not a free gift that you should just come to equity and get justice equity lays down certain principles and that is the principle that must be observed before equity can be applied one of such principle is that equity follows the law in other words after the common law equity comes next number two we have he who comes to equity must come with clean hands number three we have he who seeks equity 
must do equity. And fourthly, delay the feeds equity. Then, fifthly also, though it's not here, we also have what we call equity aids the vigilance. Equity aids the vigilance and not the indolent. Aids the vigilance and not the indolent. And then also, at the same time, equity will not suffer any wrong to be done. And all these constitute the body of rules that you must observe before you must come under equity. Then, apart from the principle of common law, the doctrine of equity, the third arm of the received English law is the statute of general application, known as SOGA. Now, what are statute of general application? These are basically the laws that were in existence before the 1st of January 1900. They became a source of law in the sense that they were laws that were operational before 1900. For example, we have the Partnership Act of 1890. We have the Sale of Goods Act of 1893. And all these are sources of law in Nigeria. And fifthly, we have what is known as judicial precedent or case law. Now, by judicial precedent, what we mean is that they are decisions that were taken by the court at time past, which, when a similar case comes up for hearing, they become a precedent. And under precedent, such precedents may either be binding or persuasive. It becomes a binding precedent where a higher court has taken that decision. And if a lower court is to take up a case that has similar matters with the one that was taken by higher court, the lower court will be bound by the decision of the higher court. And that is why it is known as a binding judicial precedent. Now, apart from the binding judicial precedent, we have the persuasive judicial precedent. This will occur when you have a court of coordinate jurisdictions. For example, the High Court of Lagos, the High Court of Enugu, the High Court of Ondo State are all courts of coordinate jurisdiction. And as such, the decision of one of these high courts cannot bind the other high court. They may be persuasively adopted. In other words, it does not have to be binding on the other higher court. So that that of Ondo uh, uh, State, the legal state may decide to adopt it. And that is why it is known as persuasive judicial precedent. Then apart from this, we know we have what is called customary law as a source of law in Nigeria. What are customary laws? Now, Nigeria, because of its nature, has between 250 to 350 customs. And because of this, customs over the years have become a source of law because they regulate the conduct of people that live in a particular society. For example, in Lagos, we have a particular custom. We have the area festival. It's a custom at a point in time. People will have the festival. And the people believe in it. And once they have been generally, once it has been generally accepted by the generality of the people that live in that particular locality, it becomes a source of law. In which case, one of the characteristics of customary law can be deduced from what I've just said now. In other words, it has a general acceptability. And secondly, the people have agreed that such custom should bind them in that particular society. And whoever comes to live in that particular locality is bound by that custom. And so, customary law becomes a source of law in Nigeria. And apart from that, there are basically some facts that will be known about customary law. As a rule, customary law are usually not admissible in evidence in court. When a matter that has to do with custom comes to court, the court will not admit that evidence. For that evidence to be admissible, we have what you call proof. Such custom must be proved before the court. And how are they proved? Basically, there are two ways of proving the custom. One, by taking judicial evidence of such custom. In other words, how has it been in time fact past? Has there been a similar matter that was decided in the court before? 
let's have just evidence that's a judicial evidence of it then secondly the there's what we call judicial notice that is the notoriety rule how notorious as a custom in this court how has it been and if that can be established then the court will admit it as an evidence in court and at the same time you must bear in mind that where customary law is brought before a judge who is vast in that custom that custom becomes admissible it needs no proof of evidence at all and secondly where it is before a judge who is not versed in that custom then the judge to be satisfied with that particular custom will call for an expert opinion or may require for manuscripts or call for the elders in that community to come and testify to that particular custom then at the same time the rule of customary law will not be applicable unless where it passed the test that was established by the colonial masters and these tests are known as the test of customary law test of customary law and then what does that mean that is for customary law to be admissible it must not be repugnant to natural justice good conscience and equity secondly it must not be incompatible with an existing law and thirdly it must not be against any public policy all these three tests must have to be passed before a customary law can be said to be a binding customary law now that's true with customary law now let's move to international law as a source of law now because the world today is a global village there's need to regulate the conduct of society and because of that international law becomes another source of law in Nigeria since Nigeria has adopted or domesticated into its legislation the international law for example the African Charter on Human and People's Rights then you have the United Nations Declaration on Human and People's Rights these have been domesticated <coughs> into our laws and because of that they form a source of law in Nigeria in which case Nigeria cannot claim that they are not part of what is globally accepted as a standard we are bound to obey it now that brings us to the end of these topics law and the sources of law and uh, by that I'm sure you'll be able to answer the questions that are listed below for example question one it says what do you understand by law now if you remember I did mention to you that there is no generally accepted definition of law but for the purpose of this study law can be defined as the body of rules established to regulate the conduct of people living in a particular society so that there can be harmony peace and justice number two we looked at what are the sources of law that is list the source of law and in examination we are told to list you list now from what we have listed you remember we listed as follows the legislation as source of law the principles of common law doctrines of equity and status of general application then next we will have customary law as a source of law then we have judicial precedent as a source of law then at the same time we have international law as a source of law I'm sure you can answer that then again number three what is common law now from what we have here as common law I told you common law there are rules or body of rules that are relating to a particular custom which were merged together and the ambiguity removed and then they now came up with one common law that is common to all different customs in England and this law became applicable in Nigeria by virtue of the fact that Nigeria was colonized by British and then number four explain what you understand by equity now the doctrine of equity can be defined as the body of rules that were established to mitigate the hardship created by common law to enhance 
natural joys and good conscience and that is all about equity then number five what do you understand by judicial precedent now from my lecture i told you judicial precedent can be defined as decision of courts which were earlier taken which similar case now came up for hearing and such decisions are bound to be adopted in that court if it is to be adopted by a lower court it is known as binding judicial precedent and if it is to be court of coordinate jurisdiction it is known as persuasive judicial precedent and by coordinate jurisdiction i mean court of equal power for example the high court of lagos the high court of those states the high court of Ogun state they are all courts of coordinate jurisdiction and lastly question number six it says discuss the scope of customary law now to the extent of talking about the scope of customary law we say customary law are laws that govern a particular people in a particular locality and as such those customs becomes applicable and as a rule they are usually not admissible in evidence in court and for them to be admissible in evidence they need to be proved in court and how do they how are they proved to have judicial notice and then taking judicial uh, uh, precedent of it and these are the ways customary laws can be established in court